Let's talk about anti-fragility. Uh, what is anti-fragility as you discuss it in the book and you know, why is it so important? Okay. First, I need to, uh, uh, to uh, tell you what fragility is. Okay. Right. Once you map fragility as what does not like volatility, then, then you can realize that, vol that the opposite would be something that likes volatility and likes variation, likes uh, turmoil, likes stress, likes stress up to a point. And the opposite would be robust. Robust is like a rock, it doesn't care. Diamond is robust, perfectly robust. What is uh, anti-fragile gains from disorder and effectively may even need disorder for fuel. So you, here you have three categories for objects. The fragile doesn't like volatility. The robust doesn't care. The resilient, the adaptable, really doesn't improve from stress. And, and you yeah. talk about it in terms of uh, you know materials that a robust thing, you mentioned a rock or a diamond, it's, it's just there. It doesn't. It doesn't gain, but it, it can shatter from being uh, kind of uh, up to a point. Up. You know, you're always right. robust or yeah. fragile, anti-fragile up to a point. You right. See? And but then for anti-fragility and fragility uh, applies more to kind of systems or human uh, living organisms. Exactly. What 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 people fail to understand, and and this is where libertarians tend to pick it up rather quickly, is that even when you read Adam Smith, you have this illusion that the economy functions like a machine. Mm -hmm. It's not like a washing machine. A washing machine needs maintenance. It's more like a cat than a washing right. machine. So like this your human body needs some stressors, and everything uh, organic and complex communicates with the environment via stressors. Mm -hmm. um, so give a you know when you say uh, the economy is not like a washing machine, it's more like a cat. I mean that's basically it's it's, it's an organic whole or an organic isn't the right word, but it's it's a complex it's system. Like, I call it organic like yeah. complex system. Yes. Okay. And then is it true though that in a complex system like that, then is every element of it is it kind of a fractal system where then each actor, right. each right. atom exactly. has to exactly. be it's exactly fractal in the sense that you have layers, mm -hmm. like just like the restaurant business. Okay, is composed of restaurants. You see, and and for the restaurant business to be robust, at least robust, or perhaps anti fragile, you need every single restaurant to be fragile, right. you see? So um, it's the opposite of Nietzsche. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. I make claims what kills me makes others stronger. That's right, because so they system, learn? They learn from your mistakes That's right. and you have evolutionary forces where the individual sacrifice for the collective and it works within your, your, your biological I, system, even at yeah. a, a cell level, cellular level. You have your, your composed of cells. Mm. If you harm some cells, you see, mm -hmm. your overall health will improve. Now this, uh, talk a little bit about, more about that because most people would say, okay, when you have a system and if there's a contagion in it, if there's a cancer in it, if there's some kind of stressor that starts taking over, you, you, you know, it, it's going to spread to the whole it's, system. It, and it, isn't this what system. we hear in the banking, it, you know, it, in the financial crisis that, oh, there's a contagion and it spreads out. You're arguing that actually a, a robust or an anti-fragile system is capable of seeing this part of the system being cancered exactly. and learning from it. Exactly. It, to, uh, uh, you know, um, cite the great Yogi Berra, mm -hmm. sure. uh, uh, a good anti-fragile system is a system in which all mistakes are good mistakes, right. you see. And a bad system is one in which, as again, to paraphrase uh, Yogi Berra, you tend to make the wrong mistakes. Right. So, so let, let's compare the banking system uh, uh, to, uh, say, uh, transportation, mm -hmm. all right? The, uh, every plane crash, makes the next uh, plane crash less likely and, 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 and our transportation safer. Now with the banking system, it's because of, you may blame it on government, I do blame it on government, but it could be some, something else. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, did the you way say you do blame it on I government? I do sort of blame it on so large government, yeah. means large banks, uh, too big to but fail. I mean, so but the, the a failure of a bank leads to an increased probability of a failure of mm -hmm. the entire system. And, and that's a bad system. How, uh, just with the banking system, what's the best way to stop that so that you're not, you're not allowing the, the problem to replicate Okay, I the have, uh, well, the, the way I, I present things mm -hmm. is, is, is overall. I say, what, do, what fragilizes uh, an overall system? What did, does fragilize overall system? Uh, the three things. Number one, uh, centralization. Decentralization spreads mistakes, makes smaller mistakes, like Switzerland, perfectly decentralized, mm -hmm. and smack in the middle of Europe. So decentralization, which is where we converge with libertarians. Right. A second one is uh, low debt, mm -hmm. because we've discovered since the Babylonians that, bet, that, that, that uh, uh, debt has systemic uh, consequences. Mm -hmm. 
whereas equity, uh, you know, doesn't have the same. Well, wait, so, now talk about this, because I, I happen to agree with you that yeah. large debt, and, you know, we're at, what, 100% of the no, American no, account? Just, even, but, yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, but uh, just today or yesterday, Paul Krugman, one of your great uh, friends and nemeses, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, he was writing about, you know, these trillion-dollar deficits, they don't matter. You know, debt, large amounts of debt. So why, why does debt uh, make things more fragile? Uh, let me talk from risk-based system. Sure. All these economists, they, they're not, say, let's put it this way, the risk is not their thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and, and, so the, the second so, uh, idea is debt, and the third one, I would say, is skin in the game. So let's mm -hmm. uh, right. talk about debt. Debt uh, leads it, when you, when, to uh, fragility, because let's say that you have two brothers. One of them borrowed. And, uh, you know, uh, they both have provisions about the future, forecasts, mm -hmm. uh, predictions about the future. His one brother borrows, the other issues equity. Mm -hmm. The one who borrows will go bust if he makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. The one who has issued equity will fluctuate, but will be able to, you know, survive a, a forecast error. But uh, is it also true that the brother with equity can never really have that big payday? For him, but yeah. overall for the system, you see, this thing is well distributed. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there's an mm -hmm. economy quality. So what you have is debt, ha traditionally, debt has blown up systems mm -hmm. and has been very good for governance to wage war. You mm -hmm. know, that's typically. But uh, yeah. the, and I'm not against credit. I'm against leverage. Right. Okay. Credit, you know, letter of credit is what made commerce possible. So what we have well, is... Talk, talk yeah. a little bit about that. So then what, what's the difference between credit where, you know, I, you, you give me a loan and I allow, you know, and I say I'm going to pay you back and that gives me the ability to get something in the short run that will help me produce more in the long run. That's, uh, that's it, okay. It, that is a credit for, I mean, yeah. most of banking started mostly, uh, I trust you. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going to go to Aleppo, Syria, and I'm in uh, Florence, and you're going to send me some silk, and you trust me, and, and then I give you some money when and then silk, and then the, my correspondent in Aleppo would pay you the minute I get my silk, that kind of uh, transaction. So that's called letter of credit, you see, where, where you have like that conditional on some uh, commercial transaction being completed. Okay, and it allows, uh, also allows people to finance some inventory. Mm -hmm. Uh, provided the buyers are a committed buyer. That kind of facilitation of commerce is how it all started, the letter of credit, and developed very well. For that, we had debt in society, and it led to uh, blow-ups in, um, in uh, Babylon, uh, and then they had to have debt jubilees, and then, of course, the Hebrews also had debt jubilees, and, and of course, say, neither borrowers nor uh, lenders shall be right. in the Septuagint, you see that. The, 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 and then you had the, the Romans didn't like that. The Greeks sort of didn't like that, except for a few intellectuals. Intellectuals, for some reason, like Mr. Krugman, liked that. And, By the and way, of that's, course, you know, that's really diminishing the, uh, the uh, currency of the term intellectual. But. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, and, and then, of course, uh, the, later on, that came back to Europe with the Reformation, and it was mostly to finance uh, wars. The Industrial Revolution was not financed by debt. California... You told me that you read my book on right. a, on a, on a Kindle or something like mm -hmm. that. This was not financed by debt; it was right. financed by equity. Right. So, so, uh, um, so debt is not necessary. I mean, it's, you can use it for emergencies, and uh, and of course we have uh, you know a lot of uh, societies, right. Catholic societies. Aqu uh, you know, uh, if Aquinas was against debt, mm -hmm. and, and his. Uh, statements were stronger than the Islamic fatwa against that. Right. So just to tell you that we have learned through history that these things, debt as leverage, form of right. leverage, can blow things up. So this is where debt fragilizes. Now mm -hmm. what we have had, of course, in this economy is uh, uh, growth of debt, mostly financed by, indirectly, by governments. Mm -hmm. Because you blow up, you know, we're going to be behind you. And, and that was, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we're so dealing with. So this is the problem with too big to fail, which went from being a worry to being inscribed in official policy. Exactly. It, it became became sort of uh, like the, the, the mode. And then, and, and, but it, you cannot separate the three. Right. Large government, you cannot separate it. It's mm -hmm. inseparable. The third point is skin in the game. Right. When you're uh, a, a, a banker, all right, and you have the upside, no downside, what are you going to do? Create the maximum number of loans that don't blow up often right. and collect your bonuses. Mm -hmm. It's like selling out of the money option. And then, of course, you blow up. Now, how do I link this to fragility? It's very simple. Fragility is short volatility, you mm -hmm. see. And selling an out of the money option is short a certain class of volatility. 
And what you have is a banker has the option, he has the upside, mm -hmm. and you have his, if you pay taxes every April 15th, you're paying for his downside. Okay, that's it, all right? They may make money, but you still cover his downside. So this is, this to me is not capitalism, it's misunderstanding mm -hmm. of basic uh, rules. And skin in the game, you know, started with Hammurabi. And it led later on to eye for eye and led to the golden rules, right? The, well, uh, now talk about how skin in the game plays out then in the, in the current financial crisis. Okay. Uh, the, 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 what, you know, we know, I mean, I work on Wall Street, I work <laughs> everywhere. You have um, a lot of uh, uh, forms of um, uh, asymmetries that are not visible to the public. Uh, corporation, right? Uh, you start, you own the corporation, and then uh, you know you go public now, uh, and then you sell it to some manager. Now, your professional manager, his aim is to look good so he can collect the bonus. He doesn't really care about the intrinsic health of the corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in banking, of course, uh, you know bankers, uh, we bail them out. The banking, I wrote on the Black Swan. I got so many letters. The ba asked me to uh, prove it because people didn't believe it mm -hmm. and also bankers of course didn't like my book. In 1983, by 1983, for the last quarter of 1982, banks lost more money in uh, you know money center mm -hmm. banks that quarter than they made in the history of banking, mm -hmm. of money center banking. And of course we bailed them out. So we started the mode under Reagan. Right. And, and of course, later on, Greenspan made yeah. uh, economic and policy to accommodate. And you re referred to Greenspan as the fragilista doctor. Fragilista, exactly. Yeah, okay. But it's not just Greenspan yeah. that was a fragilista. It was a system that bailed out banks, nationalized Cornell, Illinois, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, uh, you know, uh, allowed this uh, mm -hmm. asymmetries to prevail. Where is that coming from, though? Is that uh, I mean, and this is where you talk about it's it's. I mean, big government is necessary for that, but then the pressure is coming from the banking industry themselves. Well, the, the whole or? combination, big government, mm -hmm. uh, big central government was a big, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, bailing out authority, mm -hmm. uh, coupled with a huge number of regulators who don't have a clue. Mm -hmm.